it's not companies asking for information and it's it's people asking an AI agent to give them an, a piece of information. Can you analyze something? Can you give me uh, results of the, the hockey game last night or what's happening when I want to buy TV? Is the price up, is the price down? So it's super interesting. We've moved from giving large amount of information to businesses to providing large amount of information to AI systems for training, as well as for AI agents to be able to answer questions that they're being asked. Amigos de América Digital, llegó el momento de comenzar las conversaciones acá en el World Trade Center de la Ciudad de México, en el décimo congreso América Digital Tecnología y Negocios. No hay ninguna novedad ni ninguna sorpresa cuál va a ser el primer tema de conversación. Inteligencia artificial. Inteligencia artificial en el uso de datos, en la correcta aplicación de estos. Y para eso nos acompaña Bill Paulsen, que es el vicepresidente para toda la región de América de Bright Data y obviamente le damos la bienvenida a América Digital News TV. Bill, gracias por estar con nosotros en América Digital en el décimo congreso acá en la Ciudad de México. Thank you for having me. Now we have to do the interview in English. First of all, I know that our audience in America Digital News TV has very good knowledge of all the topics, but there are always some people that have to know with a little more certainty, what are the companies that are joining us here in America Digital News TV. So, Bill, tell us in a few minutes, what is Bright Data doing in this ecosystem and in AI? Perfect, yeah, no. Um, so, Bright Data is a company, uh, super interesting company. I've been with the company for about two and a half years now. And largely our, company is 11 years old, but we historically started by helping people gather publicly available data to make business decisions. And a lot of times that was retailers where they were looking to, if you're Mercado Libre, you want to understand what's happening on other various different uh, marketplaces so you can make decisions about your business. Very quickly, that's changed over the last two years where it's not companies asking for information and it's, it's people asking an AI agent to give them an, a piece of information. Can you analyze something? Can you give me uh, results of the, the hockey game last night or what's happening when I want to buy TV? Is the price up, is the price down? So it's super interesting. We've moved from giving large amount of information to businesses to providing large amount of information to AI systems for training, as well as for AI agents to be able to answer questions that they're being asked. So you're helping uh, your, your customer to make data-driven decisions. Absolutely. And a lot of times they're looking for, they want to remove the complexity around mm -hmm. the hours and days of weeks of research and that they have to go out to make those decisions. They generally first look internally, what information that they have, but then they're going to look for outside factors. And the internet is the world's largest database. Why would you not use utilize that when you're making key business decisions? And Bright Data unlocks that for AI agents as they look to rationalize and make decisions. Agents, I believe, is the concept of the topic of the moment when we talk about artificial intelligence. What is Bright Data offering to the market, yes. especially when we talk about agents? Yeah. So. I think one of the challenges people mm -hmm. had is that to turn up an AI agent is traditionally being complex. You had to pick a model. You decide, am I going to go with OpenAI's model? Am I going to go with Anthropic's model? You had to pick this base model. Now what's happened is people can get out, uh, open source models. You have Llama, Llama 3, which basically you can go and open source that. Compute was always really expensive, but people focus on that with releases like DeepSeek they reduce the cost of that compute to be able to run your AI agents. But at the end of the day, if your AI doesn't know or doesn't have any information, it can never answer your question. So if you're looking for financial information about a company you're thinking about acquiring and investing in, you got to go to that website. You got to get their financial statements. You got to collect news about them. You got to go figure out what's happening in social media. All of that information lives on the internet. So we help these agents get connected to the internet sort of uh, training the agent. It, we're tra 
more, more times than not, the agent's already trained to understand the information and, and what the customer is asking for, or their client via the prompt. But if it doesn't know the answer, what do you do? Like if you don't know the answer to something, typically you would go to the internet, you would Google something or you go and search for something. Agents need that ability and that's what we're unlocking for them. We unlock the internet for as a knowledge base for AI agents. Are you focused in your customers in a sector in particular? Yeah. You mentioned finance. Yeah. Is that your strong position yeah. or a retail? Yeah. So, so the cool thing about AI is AI is pretty universal. And Absolutely. we have clients that are in all types of spaces. And I'll give you a couple of uh, interesting examples. Like we have one uh, customer, they're focused in cybersecurity. Okay. And basically what they're doing is helping law enforcement. Um, they get pictures of people doing naughty things. They need to be able to geolocate that and go and figure out where did this crime happen? When did it happen? And if possible in real time, did this just happen? I'm gonna send police officers to that. So to get that information, you need to go to the internet to be able to figure out and have all this image data trained so that people can relate these two things together. I've heard that London is very advanced as a city yeah. in using uh, th those type of software yeah. to uh, engage in crime. Yeah, no, absolutely. And what powers all that is as you go through and you think about Google Maps or yeah. real estate data, it's really interesting. Uh, in the US, for example, there's this database called Zillow and they have all the on-market and all off-market homes. And generally people have taken all these pictures of their homes. So it's a great source of information for people looking at, uh, to be able to figure out this picture, what house was it, what street was it in, through a very small glimpse of it. The other thing that people are thinking about is uh, we help people do it with shipping companies. Traditionally, shipping companies needed to predict when is my cargo, when are my containers going to arrive? They had, they knew when the ship left and they knew when it would arrive. An agent can actually go out to a website that tracks shipping routes and exactly where ships are. They can go to a weather site and be able to track what type of weather and then predict, oh, there's a hurricane coming here. The ship was supposed to be there in two days. It's here. It's going to have to vert around there and predict this is going to be late. Right now in Mexico, there's a um, hurricane developing. Yeah. So it's very yeah. logical what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, absolutely. And people, so think about those two different use cases. One's in um, helping uh, police departments catch criminals. Another is tracking shipping containers. Uh, we have another company that's moved from taking their agent, not just answering a question, which I consider like a passive outcome, to actually being able to do an active outcome. And there's a company called Utori, and you can ask it, look, I'm hungry tonight. Um, I'm thinking about this type of sushi. I want only spend this much money and I want it from a company that has 4.4 stars. It will actually go out and look on DoorDash. It'll go figure out what you just asked for. Is it available in the restaurant? Gather all the stars, the pricing information, consolidate that and get, go back to the client and say, look, I found this, this is your option. Do you want to buy this? And then you can buy it. It's, it's excellent for the restaurants because when you go to a new restaurant and you look at the chart, so many options and you're like guessing, uh, yeah. maybe that I would like, or no, oh, maybe that one. It's uh, so, it's very helpful. Yeah. That. yeah, and absolutely. And there's a big trend on, when you think about the progression of AI, it traditionally was, people talked about training data. What did you train this on and what information did it has? very quickly the applications are shifting to where you want it to actually do something and you need to have real-time information and the only way to gather that is from the internet and a lot of sites will block you um, they don't want their they want public available information to people um, they don't often want them to agents but there's no difference in our world as long as you're doing this within compliance you're not going behind logins you're not accepting terms of use on websites this is, it's legal to be able to go and collect public data. It's been proven in the court of law in the United States that public data is public and it can be used for AI agents. We are talking to Bill Paulsen, that is the vice president for All America in Bright Data. Bill, I was looking at your website and there is something that I keep my, uh, got my attention. AI for good. Yeah. Not for good, for all alternative, you know. AI for doing good. Tell us about that message. Yeah. 
So we have a, a part of our business called Bright Initiatives. Mm -hmm. And really what we've realized is there's lots of people um, in academia and just in doing humani humanitarian uh, aspects. So we actually help a lot of companies. And one of the examples is we're actually monitoring and collecting data from the dark web around human trafficking. And we're helping companies be able to identify when people are, are essentially doing naughty things to be able to find that information, alert the officials um, to that, and to be able to actually help people. A lot of times universities, people are doing studies or they're doing, they're doing their PhD and they need data to be able to complete their research. So a lot of times that we do, we'll give them our data for free. We will help them as long as it's for a good cause. Um, we're trying to help them make the world a better place. And I like the message because in all these years that the AI has been developing, is the message. AI is going to replace human jobs. And I believe this type of message goes in the right direction. No, yeah. it's AI is for good. Like exactly is the message here. Yeah. So that, that, what, that is why it kept my attention. Yeah, no, it's, it's absolutely. And I think that um, if you think about it, we have about 20,000 customers. We probably have, we have well over a thousand customers that don't pay anything for our service. And we're donating that infrastructure and that data and all the money we have to spend to run our network to help them because we believe in giving back to the community. And it is important to, uh, to contribute back um, so it's, it's super important for us. Uh, tell us, uh, Bill, for the next uh, month, the next quarters, the next years, what are the main topics, the main objectives of uh, Bright Data? Maybe a new market, maybe going to a new country. Yeah. Tell us about yeah. your developing in America. Are you in other yeah. countries? Tell us yeah. about something. Yeah, so I think where we're really trying to move to is, um, I think a lot of people have used AI in some form or fashion, whether they knew it or not, um, to likely get an answer to a question. And I think where we're really trying to move and to help companies is to move to where we can start helping people. People are always worried about AI replacing them or replacing their jobs, but AI is really there to help assist them to make their job to be more efficient and also to do a lot of the things that they don't want to do. If you wanted to ask your AI personal agent, can you go book my dentist appointment? No one wants to book a dentist appointment. <laughs> Why would you want to? You got to go to their website. You got to call them. You're going to the dentist. So really what we're excited about, and it's not necessarily geography specific, but I think it's about allowing people to focus on the things that they want to and the AI focus on the things that they don't want to or power assist them to help them do the things they love better. Are you targeting new market, yeah. new countries? in new countries, finding yeah. new customers? Yeah. So I think right now, um, this is interesting. Our, our business as a company, we're pretty globally distributed, about one third in the Americas, about one third in EMEA. In about, which countries are you in the yeah. Americas? So we're in pretty much, um, our main markets are Mexico, uh, Brazil, uh, and Chile. Those are generally more of our, our well-developed markets. Uh, for us, I think AI is gonna help a lot of different, I think, it depends on what you're looking for. And there's so many use cases that like our mark, we should be selling, helping people with their agents everywhere. And we have a strong team that's based in Brazil. Uh, we have some team members here locally in Mexico City as well. Um, so we have a good, strong presence here. And we're just really out there trying to help companies just do better in AI. Inteligencia artificial para hacer el bien. Ese es el mensaje que está explícito en la página web de Bright Data. Y aquí el vicepresidente para las Américas, Bill Paulsen, lo pudo comentar en América Digital News TV. Bill, excelente conversación para Thank partir you. nuestro décimo congreso yeah. América Digital Tecnología y Negocios. Sean con nosotros porque acá tendremos muchas más conversaciones en el World Trade Center de la capital de México. Sigan acá.